Welcome again. We are going through scripture here. Right now we're on Luke chapter 13, verses 22 through 30. And we're going to be talking about the narrow door. Let's get right into this. He, that's again, speaking of Jesus, went on his way through the cities and villages, teaching and traveling on to Jerusalem. From the Hebrew name, Jerusalem. One said to him, Lord, are they few who are saved? Good question. You know, if you if you attend funerals today, most funerals would say, "Well, so and so is in heaven." Well, oh Johnny over here is in heaven. Well, you know, you know, brother Rick over here, he's in heaven today. He's in a better place. Oh well, Tommy, you know, we know he didn't, he wasn't the best, he wasn't perfect, but he's in a much better place. Almost all of these. Funerals, it's like the, these preachers always say that these people are in heaven. But what does the scriptures really say? It's either the preachers are telling the truth or the Bible's telling the truth. It's either the scriptures are telling the truth or Jesus is telling the truth, okay? We have the, the records and documents of what Jesus said. What did Jesus say about it all? Are there few who will be saved? Jesus could have said, oh, what do you mean few? Everybody is going to get saved. I mean, he, could have, he could have said, well, most people are going to be saved. Just you know, the odd people, the real evil people are going to be going to hell. Let's see what he said. The last half of verse 23, he said to them, strive to enter in by the narrow door. For many, I tell you, will seek to enter in and will not be able. Wow. Wow. Isn't that that's that's very hard. That's very strong. That is a warning, okay? Can you imagine? These this is so this Jesus is talking to someone who is looking him right in the face. You think that everybody who is right there talking to the Lord would be, you know, good with God and going to heaven, at least those who weren't really opposing him. This guy doesn't seem to be opposing him very much. But Jesus said very strictly, very sternly, strive. Again, this goes against a lot of what some of these Christians teach today where, oh, you don't strive. You just... You just believe, you know, it's just God's grace. It's just faith that you get you get to heaven. It's not what Jesus said. He said, strive. That means fight. That means work hard to enter in by the narrow door. Why is it, why does he say narrow door? Well, because it's not wide. Uh, because there's not very many people that go through that door. It's very, very narrow. And by the way, you can't carry much of anything through there because it's so, so narrow. Picture a door that you have to go through sideways in order to even get in. You can't carry much more than just the clothes on your back to go through that door. Picture that. Strive to enter in by the narrow door. In fact, let's picture a door that's so, so narrow that you can barely squeeze in. You got to have pretty much have someone push you through <laughs> sideways. <laughs> okay. Picture this, a very narrow door that you cannot take any kind of earthly thing with you through that door. Strive to enter in by the narrow door. Je now, Jesus could have said, ah, oh, don't worry. Just believe. Just, you know, my grace is sufficient. Oh, my love for you is so great. Don't worry. I got you covered. Just don't worry about it. No, he said, you strive. You work hard. Fight to get in that door. For many, he says, I tell you, will seek to enter in and will not be able. Ah, you think that everybody who wants to go to heaven will actually get to heaven. You think everybody who comes to Jesus to say, oh, Jesus, will you let me in? Will get actually, well, Jesus will not turn anybody away, right? Not in that, con not in that context, okay? Not in that context. He actually said, in, especially in Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 23, he will turn lots away. 
lots of people will come banging on the door, so to speak. And in Matthew chapter 25 as well, where he talks about, you know, the, the 10 virgins and, you know, people coming to bang on the door saying, let, let us in, let us in, let us in. And he'll say, forget it. I don't know you. Get out of here. You need to seek to know Jesus. And and actually, the, the other the other way around too, you need to seek to be known by Jesus. Jesus isn't going to go out of his way to learn about anybody that's not worthy to be learned about. We're talking about, you need to be as determined as possible to storm the gates of heaven, to go there and to repent. First of all, you got to repent before you make a move to God or else you, he's not going to listen to you, let alone let you in. You've got to repent of every one of your known sins, everything. Whatever you can't repent of, ask God to help you with, okay? Uh, I'm going to make a, a video about how to overcome sin. I've spoke a lot about this in, in, some, in my videos. There's like a thread, common thread throughout a lot of the different teachings that I do uh, about how to overcome sin. So uh, you can listen to the, video, the other teachings, but uh, I'll make a dedicated teaching just for that as well. However, strive, Jesus said. Many, he says, will seek to enter in and will not be able. That is a very frightful thought. Verse 25. One, uh, when once the master of the house had risen up, has risen up and has shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. Then he will answer and tell you, I don't know you or where you come from. Then you will begin to say, we ate, we ate and drank in your presence. You taught in our streets. Lord Jesus, we saw you everywhere. We know you. We had dinner with you. He will say, I tell you, I don't know where you come from. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. And here the Greek, the iniquity is anomia. Ah, meaning the negative, negative of nomia, which is law or Torah. When you're talking about God's Torah, God's law, you're talking about namos, namos or namia. Anomia is no Torah or living like you, like there is no Torah. Living like God's law doesn't apply today. Jesus said many will come rapping on that door saying, let us in. And Jesus will say, uh, sorry, but I don't know you. You who live like you're, like there's no law to go by. You who live like like God's law is not apply applicable to you. You who live like there is no Torah. Very serious, frightful thought. Think about it. Does your pastor preach like this? Does your does your priest preach like this? If he doesn't, he better repent and start it. This is the words in red. You're supposed, uh, as a Christian, you're supposed to read and believe and do the words in red, especially, okay? Um, and all the rest of the scriptures as well, by the way. Verse 28, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham, Abraham Yitzhak, Isaac, and Yaakov, Jacob, and all the prophets in God's kingdom and you and you yourselves being thrown outside. They will come from the east, west, north, and south and will sit down in God's kingdom. Behold, there are some who are last who will be first. And some... There are some who are the first who will be last. What an awesome, awesome teaching here. This is one of the most powerful teachings there is in, in, in the Gospels. Don't think that just because you pray, go to church, read the Bible, that you're good. That you're good with God. Don't think that, you, that just because you pray, read the Bible believe in Jesus and go to church uh, that you are okay with Jesus. You pray? Read the scriptures, my friend. Even Satan prays a lot and, and God actually talks to him face to face sometimes. 
actually, if not a lot of times, you go to church? Well, we see that the devil goes to church too. Look at the, look, some of the charismatic meetings. They're casting out demons left, right, and center in some of those churches. Y'all know that, especially you churchgoers who have a little bit of an a little bit of an idea, a little bit of light in your life that you see. You, can, you know that the devil's working in a lot of people's lives. The, the devil's devil comes in. Demons, uh, evil spirits come in with people going to church. You read the Bible? We know the devil knows the Bible too. He quoted it to Jesus. So what? What? What does that prove? You know, you read the Bible, you go to church, you pray. What does that prove? You believe in, you believe in Jesus? The devil knows that Jesus came and died and rose again. So what? You need to do what God says to do. You need to, first of all, repent of your sin, which the devil cannot do. You need to repent of your sin and do righteousness. Do righteously according to the scriptures. As it says, you know, what does God require of you, O man? That you walk justly. You, you, you do justice and love mercy and walk humbly with your God. My friend, do everything that you can do. As Jesus said, you know, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, but the, in the violent, take it by force. What does that mean? It means you can't, you don't, you don't. Sometimes it requires you to leave all of your friends behind. Sometimes it requires you to leave all of your family behind. Sometimes it requires you to sell everything you have and give to the poor. Sometimes it requires you to throw your reputation right out the door. But my friend, it's, it's worth it. As, mo, as, as, as it says in the book of Hebrews, Moses counted it much more, of much more value to have the reproach of Christ than to have the riches of Egypt. What does that mean? Well, he, had, he, he counted it to be of much more beauty and glory and he counted it to be of more value to be counted as one of God's people, reproached, made fun of, spoken against, then he counted that to have be more of more value, basically to take up his cross and follow Jesus. We know Jesus existed back in Moses' day, by the way. Jesus is eternal. So Moses considered the reproach of Christ the, what would you call it? If there's, if you might say there's any kind of not so pretty things about being a Christian, is people would talk about you. People say you're religious. People say that you're, you know, this and that and everything else. People don't like it. People say you're maybe a Pharisee or a holier than thou or a, or a Bible thumper or you know, they use all these different kind of crazy names. That's what well, you you might call that the reproach of Christ. And now there comes this Christian spit on him. You might call that the reproach of Christ. But it says that Moses saw that that was of more value than all of the riches of Egypt. Can you imagine? How much riches did Egypt have in those days? The, as far as I know, Egypt was the superpower of the world in those days. What nation today is the superpower of the world? Can you, can you imagine saying, you know, the reproach of Christ is of greater value to me than all of the riches? That, that nation would, would be able to... Uh, Offer me? Lay aside your sins. Turn away from sin. Turn away from your lust to sin. Turn to God. Turn to righteousness. Turn to doing according to what God wants you to do. Doing right according to what God says is right. And repent. And you will be blessed. I pray that each one of you will never experience Jesus saying to you, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who live like there is no Torah. 
I pray that every one of you who are listening to me, every one of you that uh, within the sound of my voice would never experience Jesus looking at you and saying, depart from me into, into eternal fire. You who live like there's no law to go by, live like there's no that God's law doesn't apply to you. Yeah, there are certain parts of God's law that doesn't apply because we just can't do it. You know, there are laws for the priests, laws for there are laws for men that women can't do. There are laws for women that men can't do. There are laws for children. But do whatever you can do. That's the point. So as you go, think about this, meditate upon this. I encourage you also to read, uh, to read Matthew chapter seven verses twenty one to twenty three. It's very powerful. It's pretty much the same as what is, what it says here, maybe a little bit more detail. Read it. So as you go your way, may God bless you, enlighten the eyes of your understanding, give you great and mighty revelation. As you call upon him, as it says in the scriptures, he will show you great and mighty things. In the name of Yeshua, thanks again.